Welcome to my lecture review on the practical malware analysis. Here we're looking at chapter 3, di uh, basic dynamic analysis. Again, we're still in the basic one, but chapter 1 was static, now we're moving to dynamic. So I perform dynamic analysis. One of the big reasons is static analysis can reach its dead end due to uh, oops, uh, due to like things like packing or opsification or just the examiner has exhausted the available analysis techniques. Dynamic analysis is way more efficient and will show you what the malware does because dynamic actually involves running the malware. Typically we do this in a sandbox environment as discussed in chapter 2. This is the quick and dirty approach. So again, that sandbox is an all-in-one software for basic dynamic analysis, typically a virtualized environment. The other uh, examples could be things like the uh, Commodore Instant Malware Analysis Tool, Threat Expert, BitBlaze, Joe Sandbox, and so forth. Though all of these are expensive, but they are pretty easy to use. And they do produce a nice PDF report as a result. So that's a benefit. So let's talk about running the malware. So when we're running malware, it's going to launch the appropriate DLLs. Because remember, an .exe file can be ran uh, directly where the DLLs can't. Because the DLLs run within the .exe. For example, if we look at run dll32.exe, which is included in Windows, it, will, it should be able to run the DLL uh, as an export argument. The export value is one of the exported functions you found in the dependency walker in chapter 1. Things like the dependency walker PE uh, view and the PE explorer. As we're looking at the exported functions, uh, and that's again that export value. Here if we look at RIP DLL, these have a specific export, uh, exports such as install and uninstall. So if we do the run DLL32 exe and it uh, loads REP DLL, we can run the install function. Some functions use uh, ordinal values instead of names, like you could do run DLL32 exe and it will be the ordinal name x, y, z, z, y, dll number 5. Number 5 actually being the value of the function, not so much the name of the function. It's also possible to modify the header and convert a dll into an exe if necessary. Moving on, it's more about monitoring the process monitor. It's where we start looking at some of the tools. And one of the first tools is Process Monitor. Process mon uh, Monitor monitors things like the registry, the file system, network process, any active threads. Uh, all records uh, of events are kept so that we can filter and display uh, them a little bit easier. That way, anything of interest, we can always go back and review later. Don't run it too long because it will fill up RAM very quickly. So for example, if we do launching calculator, it will actually run through the process of recording everything dealing with this. Process monitor, we have the start stop, the erase, the filter options, and then we have some default filter options for registry, file system, network, and processes. Again, we have a lab for this coming up, so we'll get a little bit more familiar with these tools during our lab time. So, because this is going to generate a lot of uh, process log management or log review, we might want to filter with exclude. One of the best techniques is to hide normal activities before launching the malware. Basically, before launching the malware, we can right-click each process name and exclude it. 
and then launch malware. Though it doesn't always work well with some of our samples, in real world it will. The nice thing is if you're able to exclude it before running the malware, you don't have to worry about it generating more logs. We also have filter with include, and this is pretty helpful because we can include things like process name, operations, and further detail. It's, a, again, a way to look at a specific executable instead of having to look at several. But, again, it all depends on what you're trying to accomplish. Moving on is viewing processes with the Process Explorer. This is another tool used quite frequently. You can actually see the appropriate main executables and sub-executables and their appropriate process IDs, CPU, memory, working set, descriptions, and if there is a uh, company name attached to them. Coloring. Normally, if the color is pink, it's a service. If it's a uh, process, it'll be blue. New processes are green, but very briefly. And then terminated processes are red. That way it could be color coded. Here we can actually see it going into DLL mode. You can actually start seeing the DLLs associated with it. Again, notice the colorization. Uh, here we're looking at the lower, uh, plane, lower pane view, which we change it to DLL, so the DLL will be at the, at the lower pane. We could look at executables properties. And this will uh, show things like the DEP and the uh, um, SLR status. Uh, there, uh, there is a verify option to check the disk's uh, window signatures, but not the RAM image. So it won't detect process replacement. It will only look at the window signature. Also, you have the option to do things like the kill process just in case you needed to kill the process. Strings, we have a string uh, section and we can compare the image to memory strings. If they're very different, it can indicate a process replacement and that's where again the processes when they ran or get ran, they get replaced. So if we're looking at detecting malicious documents, we can open the document a Word document, PowerPoint, Excel, PDF, whatever, on a system with a vulnerable application. We can watch the Process Explorer to see if it launches a process as well. And then the image tab of the processor or the processes property sheet will show where the malware is located. So again, it's not a single step process. It could be a multi-step process. And again, we do have a lab showing this just to kind of further uh, reiterate it. So comparing the registry and snapshots with RedShot. RedShot is another tool that we can use. Moving on, we can talk about faking a network because sometimes we actually want to see how the malware works without having to worry about it, it actually going back out to the network. So we can use things like the uh, Adapt DNS to redirect DNS solutions or resolution, and this may or may not always work. Uh, we've actually had a lot of people say that this does not work very well. So what they do is they'll use the INET sim instead. Oh, here we go. Couldn't get it redirecting in Windows XP or Windows 7. It would work, but you don't see anything in a browser or with ping so again using inet sim instead we could do monitoring with ncat and that's included with nmap so we can actually look at the appropriate connections this is actually where i got almost all of my original info is sam's class dot info this was a class done by another individual and i'm just kind of taking what he's done and expanding on it. 
Next is looking at packet sniffing with Wireshark. Here we actually can see the traffic flow to his website. All of the PowerPoint credit goes to him because he prepared all of the PowerPoints. I have not modified them at all. They're all part of samsclass.info. All credit goes to him. One of the last big tools we can talk about is following the TCP stream using Wireshark. <laughs> Wireshark follow the TPC or the TCP stream so that we can we can actually see the stream from files and save them for later review if necessary. Using INET sim We'll be setting up some type of sim. Uh, we'll probably be doing calling. And again, we'll probably be setting the DNS to calling once we actually set up our INET sim in calling. And we're going to have a lab showing how to do this. And then fred.com is the default page for INET sim to verify DNS is actually working correctly, putting it back to Kali. Again, INET SIM. So INET SIM does fool in map because the way that the tool works. I don't want to say it fools in map. I think they were kind of built hand in hand so that they would work in conjunction because we want to be able to have a safe environment to do our scanning. So the, the basic dynamic tools in practice, the tools that we've discussed so far, are going to be like Process Monitoring, uh, Process Explorer, RedShot, uh, iNetSim, and Wireshark. And again, Here's going to be our example of our virtual networking and our virtual redirect with DNS. If you have any questions, leave a comment below. Again, all credit for the PowerPoints goes to samclass.info. These are all his PowerPoints. Also, a lot of the tools we went over, we're going to make sure to have a lab on. So do stay tuned for that material. Thank you.